Third round of the FIM S1 Supermoto World Championship and UEM European Supermoto Series came back to Andorra at the circuit of Gran Valera, the largest ski resort of the Iberian Peninsula. We've not been here since 2009 and it's one of the circuits that tests both rider and machine because at an altitude of 2,500 metres above sea level, it really does take it out of the engines and of the riders. into turn one, as you see, very tight. We drop downhill into the next right-hander. And then as we come out of the dirt section, we have a very difficult chicane. Quite tight on the wind and on the way in, and very wide on the way out. And then as we go round, spending a lot of time on the left-hand side of the tyre, suddenly we have to brake a little bit harder because the corner really tightens up. We pick the bike back up, flick round to the right-hand side here. And the old circuit used to go off to the right and around about now, back into another dirt section, but with weather problems in the past, we're not doing that this year. So all asphalt this weekend on the second half of the circuit, down there past pit lane, through this sweeping right-hander, dropping downhill all the time into the final corner. And then we get back out of there, second, third, fourth gear, top gear, 150 metres long, back to the finish, back to that here in Andorra. Hola, soy Francesco Charrera, hey everyone. piloto I'm español Francesco de KTM y estamos aquí corriendo el Gran Premio de Andorra. Andorra. Invito Andorra. a que todo el mundo pues, venga a ver esta magnífica carrera en este magnífico paraje. Roberto Soldini della TDS Nuova Faur, team manager del, della squadra. Io e il mio socio Roberto Toriani ci occupiamo di TDS, di progettare e di, di commercializzare insieme all'azienda Nuova Faur le parti in cui noi costruiamo e portiamo in sviluppo nel, nel campionato. E le parti comunque essenziali di questo progetto è la nostra piastra regolabile, questa, la novità dell'anno. Il TCS, che è praticamente un Thompson Control System, e la nostra, il nostro impianto freno, che è praticamente è il nostro punto di cavallo di battaglia del momento. Il TCS ci ha permesso di fare un'ottima differenza sulla guidabilità della moto, poi una centralina JD per la mappatura del, del motore. C'è un kit progettato sempre sul nostro specifico di un pistone e lo scarico finale praticamente per potenziare il tutto. Ciao a 
tutti, sono Massimo Beltrami, sono un pilota delle Fiamme Oro del team TDS Nova Faro. Dopo diversi anni nel motocross e qualche titolo italiano e un europeo, sono passato nel mondo della supermoto dal 2001 a oggi, vincendo qualche titolo italiano, due, e un titolo mondiale a squadra con la nazionale italiana. A questo punto del mondiale è andata una gara bene e una non proprio, ho avuto dei problemi tecnici che mi hanno fatto retrocedere in classifica speriamo di recuperarli in questa terza tappa del mondiale Olá a todos, sou Rafael Fonseca, piloto brasileiro TDS FAO Laotinha. Eu sou quatro vezes campeão brasileiro de supermoto, então essa experiência que a gente trouxe, está tentando trazer do Brasil para o Mundial, está sendo bem bacana, está sendo um sonho realizado, pois eu estou andando com os ídolos que eu assistia pela televisão, hoje sou amigo de alguns, e para mim está sendo bem bacana, está sendo muito interessante, está sendo bem difícil de competir aqui, mas se Deus quiser, Vamos trazer bons resultados para o Brasil. Hi everybody, my name is Suros Nastran and I am European Supermoto Champion 2010. Uh, in this season I drive for uh, Team TDS, Lavantin from Italy and this is my first season in World Championship. My name is Fulgas because uh, my uh, friends and uh, team manager and other he said you are for us Fulgas. First race of the day in Andorra were the UEM Supermoto European Championship riders, and in the first race it was a win for Peter Volacek ahead of Teo Monticelli, Massimiliano Porfiri, Alessandro Tomicini, and the Brit riding on a Spanish license, Anthony Ford Dunn. In the second race it was Porfiri from Ford Dunn with a fine second position in this uh, Grand Prix, and then we had Lorenzo Lapini, Teo Monticelli, and Alex Tonaccini. This was race three, and as you can see, it was uh, a bit of a battle uh, after our leader, Teo Monticelli, because he amassed around about six or seven seconds early on, and then after that, it was Alessandro Tonaccini on bike number 13, the fellow Italian, and it was left then to the number 18 of Anthony Ford Dunn to try and find his way past Peter Volacek for that third position. That's him just going through there. Also, uh, Massimiliano Porfiri, he was a part of this group that was pretty much just off the back there in fifth position. Well, Tonicini was in second, but towards the end of the race, he came under pressure from Anthony Ford Dunn on bike number 18. And as you can see, he'd found his way past Peter Volacek, who started to fade in the latter stages of the race. And uh, Teo Monticelli was our championship leader before we came here. He had a nice, comfortable advantage. And uh, he was looking to increase that lead at the top of the table, certainly with a win here in the final race of the afternoon. Number 13, Alessandro Tonaccini. He was comfortable in that second position and started to break clear from Anthony Ford Dunn. And then on lap 14, the red flag came out. He had a stoppage. There was a distance out of the track where uh, oil left itself down on the tarmac. It was quite dangerous for the riders that needed to be cleaned up. So because the race had gone half distance, the result stood. Then it was a victory for Teo Monticelli. As a result, he won the overall on 65 points with Porfiri second. In terms of the championship, Teo Monticelli extends his lead now, 28 points over Massimiliano Porfiri and Tomicini. The podium looks like this, third overall, Anthony Ford done. On the Honda, Massimiliano Porfiri second, and once again, the trophy, Teo Monticelli.
the starting grid ready for the Grand Prix of Andorra. Let's have a face to face with the Charer brothers. Adrian, starting from the Super Bowl, which are your feelings before the race? Uh, I feel confident, you know, for this race. Uh, yesterday I was really fast and uh, I made my first ball of the year, so which is really good for me, for the team also. And uh, I expect to do a really good start and uh, why not control the race? Second position for Thomas, which are your feelings before this race? Well, I hope to face a good start, yeah, as it's very tough part. coming from the back on this circuit, so let's hope it'll be a good race. Good race. Yeah, yeah, go like this. Yeah, go like this. Yeah, go like this. So the first race of the afternoon then for the S1 riders and it was Adrian Scherer and Thomas Scherer who were fastest in the time training session on Saturday from Manu Hermann and Van der Bosch. Lazzarini was fifth. There was no Super Bowl on the race day because windy conditions here left conditions way too dangerous for the riders so the time stood from the Saturday practice session. In terms of the championship, Manu Hermann is our new championship leader. He has a seven point advantage over Thomas Scherer with Lazzarini third. Adrian Scherer is 24 points off the lead. Well, the first race got underway and immediately laying down his intentions was the number five of Adrian Scherer on the fast wheels, Aprilia. He was fastest in all of the three practice sessions and in the time session as well. And he got off to the great start here. We're on board with Ivan Lazzarini this weekend on the HM Honda. See, he went a little bit wider around turn one in which to stay out of trouble in what is quite a heavily congested first turn normally. And he came out of there pretty good as a result. So up front it was Adrian Scherer and he was uh, fending off the challenge initially from the 131, our championship leader, Manu Herman. And he came under attack though from the number four of Tamil Scherer on the uh, TM. But the Finn didn't take it lying down. He had to go defensive though. And though he got back into second position, Thomas Scherer was able to fight back and reclaim that second position. That was on around about lap five. Even Lazzarini, though, he was having a fairly quiet race, down in fourth position for the duration. And he was uh, being followed quite closely by the likes of number 64, Sylvain Pidar, and the number nine of Christian Ravaglia. But up front, though, it was the number five, Adrian Scherer, who was now being chased down by his brother Thomas. And so with a few laps remaining, this battle is what got the crowd on their toes. And so it was a battle of the, the two world champions. Adrian Scherer, a three-time world champion, of course, in both the S1 and S2. His brother Thomas, world champion last year for the first time. So this one, not only a battle of Aprilia versus TM in the Italian manufacturer states, but also that with the French. And there's uh, no brotherly love between these two. Once the helmets are on, a slight mistake from Adrian Scherer on the final lap. Almost saw him fall off the bike coming through the dirt section, but he managed just to keep himself on the footpeg. And a result from Thomas Scherer, his brother, on the final half lap a little later on. Then the gap opened up between the two brothers and Adrian Scherer was able to take victory from his brother to take his first race win of the season. Third was Manu Hermann, fourth was Van der Bosch with Lazzarini in fifth. Just behind them, Sylvain Bidar, Giovanni Broussai, Angel Karanyatov 
and LSC Marilus. Io sono Massimiliano Gazzarata, sono buona, manager del VTG Gazza Racing, siamo qui per questa tappa del mondiale di Pig Andorra, eh, una pista un po' particolare, considerata l'altitudine, well, eh, si è lavorato molto per poter andare le moto alla stessa potenza che in, eh, in assetto normale, il team è composto da Paolo Gasparrone, campionato del mondo, Andriano Allegretti, campionato europeo e Italo Gavinelli, il moto che si è lavorato molto bene a casa e il mondo che si è lavorato molto bene a casa. A lot at home, so we have to be competitive this weekend. Ciao a tutti, sono Paolo Gaspardone, sto affrontando hey, il campionato del mondo con il team IFG Gazza Racing. La stagione è iniziata con dei buoni risultati, poi ho avuto qualche problemino che è conto di risolvere da questa gara. E qui ad Andorra è una bellissima pista, spero di far bene anche se non sarà facile perché siamo molto in alto, si sente la mancanza di ossigeno, ma puntiamo di, di fare un ottimo weekend. Ciao a tutti, uh, sono Adriano Allegretti, anche io sono Everyone, pilota del campionato europeo uh, del 2011 e quest'anno praticamente per me è soltanto me, l'inizio perché ho avuto un infortunio nel campionato italiano all'inizio della stagione, per cui di conseguenza per me questa è la mia prima gara e mi auguro che vada bene, così come il resto del campionato e ormai sono sei anni che sono con il team IFG Gaza Racing e per cui di conseguenza devo portarlo alle vittorie. Ciao a tutti. Buongiorno a tutti, sono Gavinelli Italo, numero 60, Everyone, eh, sono un membro anch'io del team Gazza di FG Racing Team e partecipo al campionato europeo, questa è la mia prima stagione con il team Gazza e quest'anno siamo a disposizione di due moto eh, 2011 veramente performanti e abbiamo fatto degli ottimi piazzamenti sia nella prima gara di Busca che nella seconda gara di Bulgaria, un saluto a tutti e buona visione sulle gare. So the second race, the lights went out and the riders this time started from where they finished in the first moto. A nervous Thomas Scherer looking over his shoulder as he went into turn one and then he got nudged and he fell down and he was right at the back of the pack. He came round on the first lap in 17th position but once again it was his brother Adrian Scherer on the fast wheels, a prettier ahead of the PMR H2O, a prettier rider, former world champion Thierry van den Bosch who set the early pace here in the second race. Even Lazzarini, our onboard camera, had a good start again in third ahead of Sylvain Vidar and our championship leader for now. Manu Hermanen, the Finn, riding number 131 on the Zupin Husqvarna. Then it was the number 10 of Alexi Marilou. So he had a, an OK start, did the sensation of the Supermoto of Nations from 2010. That's Rini just going through there in third position. Then we see him now just behind Thierry van den Bosch coming out of that dirt section. idea of the, the way that this circuit looks and some great onboard images there from Lazzarini. But up front though, Adrien Scherer, even though he was more than comfortable in the first race, and uh, Thierry van den Bosch, who well, didn't really threaten in fourth position in that first race. He certainly got off to a better start this time around, and he finds himself all over the back of our race one winner. Thomas Scherer, meanwhile, He had progressed through the field and had got up into sixth position and had closed up onto the rear end of the 131, our championship leader, Manu Hamunen of Finland. And it wasn't long before he was through 
in two, what eventually placed him in uh, fourth position come the chequered flag at the end of the race. Mazzarini, though, was all alone in third place. But in the later stages, he was being caught by the number 64 of Sylvain Bidar. Thomas Schreier, though, after that crash at turn one, he really got to grips with the circuit and found all of the power on that TF to launch himself into fourth come the checkered flag. He found a way past Sylvain Vidal with two laps to go. But up front though, as he did in moto number one, was able to relax a little bit on the last half of the lap. It was number five, Adrian Scherer, who took his second checkered flag of the day, his second race win of the season. Jerry Van der Bosch was second, with even Lazzarini third. Thomas Scherer has the second for fourth race this time. With Sylvain Bidar, Manu Hermelin, Alexi Merilus, and Massimiliano, the closer. Third and final race then, the lights went out and Thomas Scherer almost got to turn one ahead of everybody else but it was Thierry van den Bosch who got in there first and then he went down the inside, took out even Lazzarini and Thomas Scherer and guess who took full advantage of that? That's right, our number five, our winner from the first two races, Adrian Scherer and just behind him, the number nine of Christian Rivaglia. But van den Bosch recovered well though to come over the line third, and at the end of lap one, at the start of lap two, he found his way back into second position. Vidar was in fourth place, and then we had Manu Hermann in fifth, and that's really sixth. Thomas Scherer was seventh ahead of Alexi Marilus and Giovanni Boussai down in ninth, with the number 20 down in tenth position. But as the race went on, Thomas Scherer, he then found his way through the field. First, he passed Christian Rivaglia. That took him into third position. He had to close down then Thierry van den Bosch if he was to stand any chance of, well, taking full advantage of what had been a pretty good day's racing so far for him. He was on the verge of maybe reclaiming the championship lead. Christian Rivaglia, he got nudged aside by two riders there, the first of which was Manu Hermanen. The second was Sylvain Bidar, so Vaglia losing two positions on around about lap 13. He was now in sixth position. Manu Hermanen, he led the championship on that 131 Husqvarna before we came here. But he was now in danger of losing out to Thomas Scherer, who was two positions ahead of him in this particular race. Ilya Samartin, the Spaniard, he can only sit and watch as it was pumped for him in this third final moto. But up front, it was once again the number five, Adrien Scherer, who placed his Aprilia on the top step, and he was the first one home. Check the flag for the third time. Thomas Scherer came over the line in second, and I think he realized he was the new championship leader. Van der Bosch across the line third ahead of Manu Hermanen and Sylvain Vidar. And here are those official results from that third race. Christian Vagla held on for sixth position ahead of Lazzarini and Massimo Beltrami. Next pair of was ninth, and Giovanni Boussai was tenth. Overall, though, in the Grand Prix, maximum points for Adrian Scherer. Three wins out of three, and 75 big ones for him. Thomas Scherer second, and the red number plate there just inside. Highlights the fact that he is our new series leader. We'll look at the points in just a moment. But the podium looked like this to the right. On the first step of the podium, it was Thierry van der Bosch. Riding the number 101 on the TMR 820 Brilliant. Second overall on the 747 TM Factory Machine was Thomas Scherer. Big smile on his face. And making it a all French podium. Man in the middle, taking his first three wins and his first overall Grand Prix victory of 2011. Fast wheels. Brilliant rider of Adrien Scherer. But we have a new championship leader. Ah, la 
gara è andata veramente molto bene, non mi l'aspettavo. Well, yeah, really ho subito visto che, no, che ero velocissimo this. nelle prove di ieri. Yesterday, e I poi oggi quando ho vinto la mia prima manche sono liberato e ho concluso so la giornata con la mia prima vittoria di, in Gran Premio e vorrei really like veramente ringraziare tutto Aprilia. il team, la Prilia che mi ha dato una moto fantastica per oggi e, e questa vittoria la dedico a loro, grazie a tutti. The new championship leader on 8-3 moves too clear of Manu Pamela, but Adrian Scherer is right back in it with four points off the lead. Adrian Scherer, though, his season really starting to pick up. As he heads to the next race, Aprilia and TM still duking it out, though, in the battle for supremacy in the manufacturer standings with this Connor Firm on the now there in four. But it's all about Adrian Scherer today. Three wins out of three. He arrived here, 28 points off the lead. He leaves just four points out now off of his brother, who is the new championship leader. You can see all of the action at the next round on the 28th of August. Well, we're in Italy at Trishina. We'll be there. We hope you can join us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.